pro-choice people are pro-abortion. They uh, um, believe in three choices. One, you can keep the baby. Two, you can give the baby up for adoption. Or three, you can have an abortion. Now, pro-life people are also pro-choice uh, to the extent that they believe in the first two choices. You can, one, keep the baby, or two, give the baby up for adoption. My point is the pro-life position does believe in choice uh, between keeping the baby or giving it up for adoption. So it's unfair to call them anti-choice. They're not anti-choice. They, they simply have a ne more narrow view of the choices that are acceptable. Both the pro-life view and the pro-choice view include um, choices. We really shouldn't use the word pro-choice. Uh, the difference between the pro-choice and the pro-life is um, the pro-choice include the option of abortion, whereas the pro-life uh, accept only two choices. And uh, anyway, the pro-choice really should be called pro-abortion because that's the difference between the pro-life and the pro-choice. Uh, the pro-life believes in two choices and the pro-choice believe in three choices. But the third choice is abortion. Uh, so why not just call the pro-choice people pro-abortion? I want to emphasize that pro-life people are in favor of choice. It's just not choice that includes abortion. It is choice that includes adoption. You can either keep the baby or give it up for adoption. So that's choice. So you do have a choice. The pro-life people believe in legitimate choice, whereas the so-called pro-choice people include in their options the, the option, uh, 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 the choice of uh, the, the right to choose abortion, which is not legitimate. It's not a, a legitimate choice. It isn't legitimate to kill someone and say you are exercising your right to choose. No one has the right to, uh, no one uh, can, uh, no one has a right to kill somebody and call it a right, a right to choose. It's absurd. You don't have the, the right to choose murder. That's not legitimate. In America, up until 1820, men had the right to choose. Um, it was legal to shoot somebody as long as you gave that other person the right to try to shoot you. Uh, I'm talking about what is called a duel. The arrangement is called a duel. This so-called right to kill was banned in America around 1820 or 1822. And the so-called right to kill a fetus uh, deserves to, to be banned just like dueling is now banned. And when abortion is banned, it won't be a moment too soon. 
a woman friend of mine says that Kavanaugh, the new Supreme Court justice, she was against his uh, selection, his approval, the approval by the Senate uh, to be Supreme Court justice. She said they're trying to take us back to uh, when women had no rights. I wanted to tell her that when abortion was legalized, that's when uh, the, the clock was turned back. Turned back to pre-Christian times, times when killing your baby was a common common uh, um, thing. And um, uh, if we do get, when we do get rid of abortion, we'll be um, going, coming back to civilized behavior. Abortion is like rape. Uh, in rape, uh, someone you don't want inside you um, penetrates takes away your privacy, and in abortion, uh, you don't want the doctor, you don't want the instrument inside you, but you are forced by your circumstances uh, to accept it. It's, it's uh, you're being forced, uh, and um, uh, you don't want the doctor there, he may be a stranger to you, and to that extent, abortion is a little bit like rape. There are three passages in the Bible, in the, in the Law of Moses, um, where the, the, uh, uh, Moses says, don't boil a kid, a, 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 which is talking about a baby goat. Don't boil a kid in its mother's milk. Now, what is the message here? Uh, milk uh, stands for the, the uh, breast, and the breast uh, stands for the reproductive organs as a whole, the reproductive machinery. And the boiling of the goat in the milk. The boiling is an extension of the killing of the goat. The goat is first killed and then it's boiled. So there's a connection between the boiling and the killing. Long story short, when Moses says three times, I don't boil a baby goat in its mother's milk, the message is, don't use the organs of reproduction in connection with the opposite of reproduction, which is the killing of the baby. So these three passages are clearly anti-abortion passages, and yet the Jews uh, did not recognize that what they did with those passages is they they made a rule where you don't eat milk, or milk products like cheese, with meat. So if you're a Jew, you're not supposed to eat pizza uh, with that has uh, pepperoni. And so they completely miss the whole point of those three passages. Uh, and um, so I want to emphasize in this video the real meaning of those three passages, which is uh, the Bible, it, God and the Bible are against abortion. Now, I'm going to give a written transcript underneath this video so you can make 
a copy, a written copy. And so when Russia bombs America and destroys the EMP, will destroy the computers, and you won't be able you won't be able to uh, anything you store on computers uh, probably will be um, wiped out. But if you have it on paper, you'll have you you won't lose the information. So uh, please uh, put it on paper. And as far as when Russia will bomb America, which will be a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, and it, it will be at that time, that time that the rapture takes place. And when will it be? My latest guess is it'll be in early December, around um, Pearl Harbor Day, which is December the 7th. And uh, the only real evidence supporting this this uh, this guess, the the idea is the the Russia attack will be the start of five months of tribulation, which is talking about the time in which Russia will rule the world, and that would mean. Uh, that April will be the end of the five months. And um, Christ would come a little bit before that. Uh, let's say March. And uh, what he does is he takes the Russian soldiers invading Israel. When he appears in the sky as light, It'll be a repetition of um, Acts 9, verse 3. Uh, Christ appeared to Saul of Tarsus as light and turned Saul 180 degrees. He made him his apostle instead of uh, 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 the uh, soldier uh, going after the Jews that believed in Jesus. Like Saul was going after a group of Jews, the Russian soldiers will be going after the Jews, making war against the Jews. Christ appears to them. They go over to his side. He sends them home to Russia to proclaim God's glory, which is the glory of the second coming. And uh, that's how the revolution against Gorbachev the Antichrist uh, takes place. This is in. This comes from Isaiah 66, verse 19. It says that uh, he, God will uh, uh, send the survivors uh, to the nations. So the survivors of the nations that had attacked Israel. He sends them to the, to the nations to proclaim God's glory. That is a direct quote. And um, uh, I read into that that uh, uh, that's how Gorbachev gets overthrown. And so the point is that while Christ is the Savior of the world, he delegates to the Russian soldiers the work of overthrowing Gorbachev, so that people around the world, instead of hating the Russians uh, for taking over the world uh, under Gorbachev, uh, the world will love the Russians because they're the ones that overthrow Gorbachev. <laughs> and um, so, uh, so that's the way Christ works.